Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Isaac Takle. In this presentation, I will share with you the statistical analysis and breeding decision support tools in cassava base. In the coming few minutes, I will highlight tools you can use to explore or assess your data and perform predictions and inferential statistical analysis. I will also uh, highlight some tools that can make your breeding decision uh, a little easier. In the process, I will also uh, uh, try to make an impression of the data visualization in the database that you can use to make sense of your data. So obviously many of the analysis tools uh, I, sh I will share with you are familiar to you uh, or you do the same analysis uh, in your laptops. So the question is why, why do the same analysis in cassava base? Uh, one is you are likely to gain efficiency. And this is because in cassava base, uh, the analysis pipeline is well integrated and automated. Uh, it takes few clicks to just do from data ret retrieval, uh, data pre-processing uh, before the analysis, doing the analysis, and saving the analysis into the database. Second is uh, because cassava base implements standard algorithms and methods for the analysis, uh, regardless who does analysis, uh, when or from where, uh, you are likely to get the same results. Um, third, uh, you can easily store intermediate or, or final results from your analysis into the database, which you can use later uh, for your own or uh, just share it with your colleagues. So what kind of exploratory data analysis can you do? Well, to start with, uh, you can do uh, descriptive statistics uh, and you can do this uh, immediate to uploading your data into the database. Uh, you go to the trial detail page and you can just have a glimpse of what your data looks like. Uh, you can look at the minimums, maximum values for a trait, you can look at the mean values, Etc. You can check if there are any missing data points um, and so on. Um, you can also check at the spread of the data using a histogram. Uh, and using the histogram, you can see if there are any outliers. Uh, you can just evaluate uh, what clones might be performing better than uh, what clones. Uh, if you want to know what traits are related with each other or what kind of relationship they have, so you can focus uh, on certain traits for your analysis or selections, uh, or just to have an idea what selecting for one, for one trait means to another trait, uh, you can do correlation analysis, and the correlation analysis will uh, generate a heat map for you. And by pointing uh, at any pair of threads, you can see uh, the relationship, its magnitude and direction. If you have uh, data from multiple environments in terms of locations or years, and you wanna compare how the data looks like across years or locations, you can use uh, a trials comparison tool uh, and it will generate the scatter plots and histograms for you to get a sense of what the data looks like across the uh, environmental conditions. If you wanna assess any underlying uh, patterns or similarities uh, in a group of clones, for example, based on any kind of measurements taken on them, whether it is phenotypic or genotypic uh, measurements, um, you can use PCA and it will show you if there is any underlying pattern. Uh, for example, applying a, a PCA analysis on this uh, mock uh, dataset that is made of uh, 
uh, clones from NACRI and IIK shows that yeah there is some differentiation uh, between the clones from the two reading programs. If you want to uh, examine in more detailed way uh, what kind of underlying similarities or subgroupings there are in a set of uh, clones, uh, you can also use hierarchical clustering. Um, for example, here I'm showing uh, an output from one analysis that was done in a population composed of clones, again from NACRI and the IITA, and it shows that uh, uh, the IITA clones are uh, clustering into one group and the uh, clones from NACRI are clustering into another one. And of course, within each uh, big clusters, there are also subclusters. So you can do this kind of analysis and use it in your downstream analysis or just have an idea of, of in what kind, with what kind of material you are working. If you want to create um, just any number of subgroups, or if you want to segment your data into any number of groups uh, based on phenotypic data measurements or genotype data, or even uh, GEBVs, you can also use k-means clustering. Um, and the tool generates uh, a plot for you uh, with the different groups uh, colored differently. And there are many uh, outputs, of course, you can download and check. If you want to uh, check what kind of relationship there is between pairs of clones, or if there is any inbreeding uh, in your clones, you can also use the kinship and breeding analysis tool. Uh, with this tool, again, you, you generate a heat map uh, showing the degree and direction of the relationship between the clones and the level of inbreeding in the clones. So moving on, uh, of course, you can do ANOVA. You can do ANOVA on single trial data. And doing that will generate you ANOVA table, um, the adjusted means, and also there are diagnostic uh, plots you can use to assess the ANOVA model. If you have uh, data uh, from multi-environments, you wanna assess G by interactions, there is also a tool for that, uh, that implements uh, AAM, MI and GG by plot approach. And you can get uh, the stability of your clones uh, across the environments using this tool. If you just want to uh, predict or estimate blobs or blues uh, by fitting your own custom uh, mixed models, you can also do that. There is uh, a tool that allows you to fit uh, factors as fixed or random uh, uh, effects in, in the model. And also you can use this, uh, you can use the same tool to add interaction terms into your model. In any case, uh, you can estimate your blues or blobs using this tool. If you do that on multiple traits and uh, you want to calculate selection index, uh, there is also a tool for that. Uh, the this tool, selection index calculator, allows you to give uh, any relative voice, weights to your traits uh, and calculate the index. Uh, a genomic prediction tool for that, it is called SOLGS. Uh, and with this, uh, genomic prediction tool, you can create training data sets, fit prediction models, and use the prediction models to estimate or predict GBVs on your selection uh, candidates. Uh, besides that, the tool has many integrated features that can make uh, uh, the workflow easier. Uh, for example, there is a feature to evaluate how 
the GBVs uh, correlate with the phenotypes. Uh, there is a histogram plot you can use to evaluate the spread of uh, uh, the GBVs. Uh, you can check uh, at, at any end of the histogram to know what clones are performing best, what clones are performing worst. Uh, there is uh, a way just from here to store the GBVs into the database. Um, if you want to check uh, the expected uh, genetic gain, there is also uh, an interface to generate box plots. Uh, um, if you do uh, predictions on multiple traits, there is also an integrated selection index tool. Uh, that allows you to assign any uh, relative weights to your traits and calculate the index. If you are using GWAS in your breeding program, there is also Sol GWAS. Um, with, this, with this tool, uh, of course, you can uh, do the standard GWAS analysis uh, and generate Manhattan plots and including uh, diagnostic plots like QQ plot. So to wrap up, uh, um, in cassava base, uh, there are many tools you can use to explore your data, uh, gain insight into your data in the database. And also there are tools that you can use to do uh, predictions and inferential statistics. And Doing all those analysis in the database is likely to improve uh, your efficiency uh, and also maintain data integrity. All those tools I showed you are available in all the uh, breed-based uh, instances. So you can explore them uh, in your databases. Uh, if you just want to explore the tools, just get uh, some practice on them. Uh, you can go to Cassava Base and find them, I think most of them, in the Analyze menu. And thank you for your attention.